This episode is brought to you by the Your Next Chapter Business Club. It provides community, resources, coaching, and training for women in business. In fact, everything you need so you can confidently grow you and your business each and every month. The club is now open and I would love to welcome you in. You can find out more details at angelaraspis.com forward slash club. Inspiration, clarity, confidence, and wholehearted business strategy. Welcome to your next chapter, the podcast especially for women in their 40s and beyond who know that business and personal development go hand in hand. Tune in each week for marketing, mindset, and personal growth strategies, along with inspiring stories from women around the world who are creating new businesses and lives that are personally fulfilling and financially rewarding. If you're looking to create a business and life you love, you're in great company. Let's find out what will unfold in your next chapter. I'm your host, Angela Raspis, and I'm so delighted that you're here. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Your Next Chapter podcast. This is Angela Raspis and you have joined us in the Purpose, Passion and Reinvention series. We're up to the last episode in this series and I am delighted that I have the lovely Susie Walker, who is the editor of Psychology's magazine, joining us today. I just discovered this magazine literally about six weeks ago and I am deeply in love with the style and the heart and the depth and the richness of the articles and the conversations that happen in this magazine. I've also become a part of the Life Leapers uh, closed Facebook group which is associated with the magazine and having the most tremendous conversations with women in there who are very much aligned with finding and uncovering and moving into their purpose and taking great leaps as the name suggests into what I would call a next chapter. So when I met Susie online, I knew I needed to bring her into this conversation so we can talk all about what might stand in the way of you actually embracing and moving forward into your own purpose, aligning with it and starting a fresh chapter. Susie, thank you so much for spending your time here with us today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's great to connect, especially with one of our life leapers. It's amazing that you're in our club and you're and you're sort of walking the talk with us, taking the journey with us. So it is fantastic. Isn't it fantastic how we can meet people on in all different areas of the world? That's the beauty of the internet that can bring us together and we can find such alignment with them with people like each other. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, absolutely. And I'm such a huge believer in creating community and gathering together people who are like minded, because I think it can make all the difference when you actually are making um, a life leap or, you know, creating your next chapter, you know, that, that other people are on the other side and going, it is possible. And this is how I did it, you know, and just supporting you. So I think it's really important. Yeah, that concept of way showers. I mean, I've I've had many mentors in my world who don't even know that I exist. You know, I look at people like Brene Brown and many, many others who authors are particularly a way in which I connect and they've shown the way. They've shown a path of possibility, which I've, you know, started to step down, dance down quite often. So whether it be someone who has an enormous presence in the world or whether it be someone just like me that I've connected with in one of those Facebook groups, you're absolutely right. Being in community and that feeling of connection and not aloneness in this quest as we move forward and expand I think is just absolutely vital and you've you've created a beautiful community that's that's very supportive so thank you for that but let's talk about your previous chapters being the editor now of such a wonderful magazine is obviously very fulfilling and very connected for you but what happened before what led you to this path because next chapters often pile on top of one another and this is very much an evolution that we are that we are in Sure. I suppose it starts off when, you know, you leave university and I left university and didn't really, I, well, I always wanted to be a writer, but I just didn't think I was clever enough or anything enough. So I ended up kind of floating into various jobs. I worked in a, I worked for a newspaper, but in the sales department, <laughs> um, because I was desperate to sort of, um, to write and I was sort of hovering around the editorial team, but was selling advertising space. Um, and for me, and then I went on to get a, a, a sales job in a, in a translation agency. I, I'd studied French and German at school. And so I came, became this kind of sales manager and, I, was, and I, I sort of got married and I had a company car and I had a mobile phone, which in those days was quite a big <laughs> thing. And from the outside, you know, it looked um, really really quite, you know, like, looked like I was being successful. And, but I hated it. I absolutely mm. hated it. And I just 
want that my heart is longing 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 to be a writer to and I used to write in my spare time I used to do writing courses um and then um um my 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 parents had died so it, in my in my 20s um i i was sort of an orphan so in my teenage years i had this kind of shock of of losing my parents both to cancer which was just awful as you can imagine oh, for yeah. a young woman however almost i i seem to have a a kind of zero tolerance for putting up with anything so i sort of drifted into these these jobs that and and, and did well but thought you know what life is too short life is too short for this mm -hmm. so at the age i think i was 23 24 i i went to my boss in my translation agency and said, can I have two weeks holiday? And unbeknownst to her, went and did work experience for the Yorkshire Evening Post, um, which was a newspaper in Yorkshire, which is where I lived at the time. I just wanted to see whether journalism could be an option for me and to see if I loved it. I spent two weeks there and just thought, oh my God, this is amazing. I loved it. I got lots of pieces published in the paper. And um, I came back and resigned and then went to London and did a very short course, three months in journalism, and um, just started working very quickly as a freelance journalist in London. So that was my sort of my transition from, you know, kind of being very lost. I was very lost in my early years. You know, I had a lot to deal with. There was a lot going on in my my kind of emotional life. Um, but I, what I knew in the heart of my being was that um, life is short and you need to, you do need to follow your purpose. You do need to follow your dreams. Um, and so that's what I did. I went to London. It was almost like with my neckerchief on, on a stick <laughs> and went to London to the big city. And, you know, it was really hard. I was literally working at Pizza Express or Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut it was, I think, at the time, during the day and, um, uh, sorry, during the evening and then trying to pitch during the day because at the beginning, I, I didn't know how to do it and I wasn't very good and all of those things, but I managed to support myself by um, working in a pizza hut, basically. And then slowly I started to sort of build a portfolio and get more and more work so I didn't have to work in the evenings anymore and then started my 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 freelance journalism career. And then it went on, I got jobs on a magazine. I worked for a magazine called New Woman. Um, and um, I worked for the Times and Marie Claire. And so I had an amazing, amazing experience as as a journalist. And then um I, I, but I was, I was a little bit screwed up because of what had happened with my parents. And so I used to smoke a lot. I was the health editor of New Woman and I was smoking and drinking. It was that period in London where it was all about, um, you know, the, the, the ladette. So, you know, it was all about drinking whiskey and smoking cigarettes. Uh, Loaded was this big magazine for men. And it was all this kind of, you know, women acting as men. And I mean, I was, to be honest, I was a complete mess. You know, I was drinking too much. I was smoking. I was, you know, it was a terrible time when I look back. But I, then someone suggested I got a life coach. And I was like, oh, what's a life coach? Oh, my God. And I had one session <laughs> with her. And um, it was, it, it changed my life, basically. I, she sort of asked me lots of questions about what I wanted to create uh, what do you want to create in your life? What do you want to do? And I was like, what do you mean? What do I, what do you mean? What do I want? I had no idea that I could direct my life. So I sort of said, well, you know, if, if I could, if I could create it, this is what it would look like. And then she said the killer question, what would you have to believe to make that happen? And I, I honestly, I didn't understand what she meant. I said, oh, sorry, what do you mean? What do, what do you mean? What do I have to believe to make that happen? And then when the penny dropped, I really cried. I cried um, because what I realized is I didn't believe that it was possible for me. I didn't believe I was clever enough. I didn't believe I was good enough. And then from that moment on started this kind of real, uh, the real inner work of building strong self-esteem, building, you know, the, the idea that I could create a vision and make it happen uh, that doubt and you know was completely normal and everyone felt it it wasn't just me um, because I had terrible imposter syndrome and um, I thought it was just fluke that I'd managed <laughs> to get all of you know to become a, a journalist so that that started my my second chapter which was I so I I didn't mean to become a coach but I, I for very early days it was 2000 when I I'd 
I became a coach. I trained with a, a coach organization, which was very new in those days because I just was so evangelical about it. I was like, this is amazing and it will change your life. So, and then I started, I created my own coaching business as well as my journalism practice as well. And um, I, I became a career change coach and I, you know, created a kind of a business for, for a long time doing that until psychologies called me and said, would I ever consider being the editor of psychologies? And, and it was a perfect combination of both my journalism skills and also my coaching skills. And, and then five years ago, I moved into this, this new chapter of being the editor of psychologies. Oh, and I, and I love seeing how they've flowed together. It's one of those scenarios, and we often talk about this on this show and with my clients, is that standing where you are now, you couldn't have at the time projected forward and predicted where things were going to go. But when you look back, you can see all of those pieces were leading towards where you are now. There's no regrets. Yeah, even that time, and there's so much, Susie, of your story that I completely have got parallels with. My first jobs were selling advertising space in a newspaper and, yeah. and then going on to sales. And, then, and, and I had a very, a very strong period, unfortunate period of too much drinking, too much smoking, and I stepped away from that in uh, 2006 and then discovered this whole world of personal development. And, and as I've heard you say, and I very much agree with as well, the inner work creates the outer results. Yeah, that, yeah. that title, we have to do that work on ourselves. And, and to, again, to use your phraseology, being able to manage our negative emotions in the moment is so important because all those things that you just talked about, the imposter syndrome, the not feeling I was good enough, and not realizing that we have that ability, that absolute ability to create our own path. Once you realize that, that you can actually take hold of life and not wrestle it to the ground, but you know, take it by the hand and decide where you're going to lead it to, everything changes, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I think, I mean, I suppose I learned at a young age that there's some things that, you know, will knock you sideways and, that, you know, the outside stuff you can't change. You know, mm. people die, uh, you get divorced, you know, terrible things happen on the outside. But what you do have control of is how you react to it. Um, yeah. And for me, that was such an, ast- I mean, I know it sounds obvious, but it, for me, it was such an astonishing aha um, and learning how to to manage that, to honor your emotions, to, um, you know, not be overwhelmed. So I have all of those emotions, the not good enough, the imposter syndrome, the doubt, all of those, just now, just exactly the same as I did, you know, as when I was 18. I mean, (laughs) I found that they don't particularly go away. The the same thoughts pop up, but it's, it's just now it's like, oh, it's okay. And I know how to comfort myself. I know how to negotiate. I know how to, um, you know, really practice a lot of self-care around, around all of that kind of onslaught of negativity. And, and that has, it's just, it has completely transformed my life. Um, whereas before, before I went on the self-development journey, I thought it was all true. I thought that what I believed my, my thoughts were true versus it's just this old programming from a long time ago, you know, and the things that I picked up on the way. Um, and it, you know, it's just slowly step by step, day by day in the moment, just being able to know, you know, it's just mindfulness, I suppose, noticing your thoughts and um, having compassion for yourself and like, Oh, you still got that going on. Oh, it's okay. Mm. Come on then. We'll have a cup of tea first and then we'll try it. And I, I'm, I'm trying to be very gentle with myself um, in, in, in this, in this chapter, uh, because I always thought that, that perhaps all of that would go away. <laughs> I, I mean, but I, I mean, I am more confident in. So I think one of the best things I think for people is to to. I think, um, in my phraseology, it's a little bit heebie-jeebie, but the universe um, rewards the brave. You know, it, you know, you have to be brave, and the braver I am, the the the, the bigger the rewards. So. 
often if you're brave, you put yourself out of your comfort zone, you fall down, you, but the, they're the biggest learnings ever. So I, if I know I'm going to be kind to myself and I know that I'm going to learn something, no matter what, even if, if the result is I fail or I humiliate myself or whatever, it doesn't matter because I know that I'm going to learn something really huge and it'll help me on my self-development journey. And I see it in everyone around me. I believe that you know, you can't do this work by staying in your comfort zone. You know, you have to be constantly kind of inching out. So, and I think the the easiest way to start this is on a daily basis. So sometimes, you know, you've got to practice courage, you know, on a day-to-day basis, and then it becomes easier. But, you know, how can you kind of push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit every day? So when it comes to a really big thing, when you're going to, you know, go on a date with someone that you really fancy, or you're mm-hmm. going to pitch for a business that you, you know, um, that you really, you know, want to happen, that you you're more practiced at it, and practice that handling all of that onslaught of emotions of it's never going to work. What are you doing? Panic! Ah! So if you can if you can cope with all of that in the small things, it helps. It's it's. I mean. I think we should start something called the courage gym. You know what I mean? It's just practicing, practicing, practicing. Because the more you practice it, the better you get at it. And it's this kind of emotional intelligence, this emotional um, being able to notice what you're thinking in the moment is yeah. probably one of the most important things I've learned. I bet. And, and I had another one of those examples today. I'm having, you know, we have these days, as you just said so clearly, we hoped that by now, you know, at the ripe old age, in my case of almost 50, it's like, surely by now I should be getting over these, you know, these fears, these doubts. But the reality, <laughs> the reality is, is that, yes, they are still there, but I've learned how to, how to navigate them. So I was walking upstairs today sort of going, ooh, ooh, ooh. you know, life is yep. a bottle of toenails and I don't want to do my work and, and all of that. And then, yes, that's the key. I noticed the thoughts. I paused. I practiced some self-compassion. So let's I'll let have them some space around the thoughts. So my thoughts are not reality. They're just thoughts. And then yeah. there was the, ah, uh, there's the story again. And then recognizing there's a thing in the recovery um, movement, which talks about don't have the halts, which is don't get too hungry, angry, yeah. lonely, tired, or sad. Yeah. And I recognize I ran a full day workshop yesterday with um, women from my, one of my masterminds that were all here at my home. And in that scenario, you're giving so much of your energy. It's yeah. not surprising that today I had a drop. And, but I had to remember that. I had to bring myself back to what's actually going on in the moment, practice that self-compassion. And Hebo, three hours later, I'm feeling absolutely fine. So it's yeah. recognizing that our, our emotions are also transient. They come and go. You have those waves of up and waves of down. So it's really, you know, we need the oars, don't we? And that's why I think where the courage gym could certainly give us the muscles to use those oars to navigate our way through those rocky periods that, that slap us left, right and center. I mean, I think you're, you're absolutely on it with the halt, you know, piece because it's, um, I mean, I am most at risk of kind of going under when I'm hungry, mm. you know, a- angry, tired. And that also comes into the, compa- I mean, I, you know, I work really hard. I'm a grafter. I always have been. Um, but if I, d- and I can just keep going until all of a sudden last week, <laughs> I had a very, very busy week and I'll find myself ranting about something to somebody else, which is kind of unusual for me. And I thought, oh, hang on, what's going on here? And I'm like, (laughs) okay, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're really, really tired right now. Mm. And it's like you have to, and it's, it's just knowing. So again, you know, I'm just turned 50. And you'd think at the grand old age, we would be self-aware enough but even when you're self-aware you still kind of can tip over so it's it's being really vigilant um, about making sure that you have enough sleep and it's you know on a very physiological level making sure you plan I mean I think the problem is with having purpose-driven businesses is you're so passionate about it you're so uh excited about it you love it and you're it's amazing and you're so fired up I mean I have so many bloody ideas and I'm like (laughs) but you've got to manage your energy and your physiology and be able to you know all I mean people talk about all the time and I used to roll my eyes but it is absolutely true because especially if you're leading your business or creating the vision for your life you you know often it's other people who are flagging and you have to kind of hold the ship You've got to, you know, steer the ship 
And if you're collapsing a heap, you can't steer the ship. It's so, a really, it's a really good point there about here. It's bringing in our own personal boundaries. I'm much like you, and I call it popcorn brain. Yeah, idea, idea, idea. There's another one. There's another one. And I can find if I don't keep boundaries within my business, I will quite happily work for hours and hours for exactly yeah. the reason that you said. You know, I'll interview people, have these conversations, write blog posts, create resources, service my client, and on and on and on. So it's so important for us to bring boundaries into our own business as well. So as you're saying, being conscious when you're out of alignment, i.e. I'm tired, I'm this or that. So perhaps we need to come back a step and put those boundaries in place before we get to that that point that's yeah, self, no, that's absolutely. self-care as well yeah and it's also about those kind of routines you know that you just you know um that you do without thinking because sometimes when you're I, I mean in a way I don't believe in work-life balance because <laughs> Me neither. you know it, no, it's it's I think that's a myth I think um it's more about um trying to set up systems where you can be you can be at the most energetic and the best, uh, you know, the best that you can be. And so, you know, there's certain things for me as if, you know, I know that if I, for me, I've just discovered the gym and it's been a real lifesaver. So, you know, being able to run and do all of that is fantastic. Being at, you know, for me, just 10 minutes of meditating. I used to try to kid myself that I'd do an hour, but 10 minutes of meditating in the morning, <laughs> fantastic. And also 10 minutes journaling um, as well. If I don't journal, that's one of the things it's, you know, for me, it's being able to, I am really negative in the mornings. I wake up and I'm a bit like grumpy and blah, blah. And I, by journaling, I kind of vomit all out and, oh, you know, moan, 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 moan. And then <laughs> it must be to do with my blood sugar probably. And then, and then as you start, oh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you sort of get out of it. And by the end of my 10 minutes, I'm in a kind of, yes, this is, this is my intention for the day. It's like you've recalibrated. You've recalibrated yeah. yourself when you've, when you've taken the time to do that. That's actually a couple of steps. Have you heard about the miracle morning, that practice? Yes. It's amazing yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I've been trying to adopt that I'm definitely a, I, I use the calm app 10 minutes of meditation yeah. and then 10 minutes of journaling has been pretty normal for me yeah. um, but I'm bringing in the other pieces from the miracle morning as well doing the visualization doing the affirmations got to admit the exercise has fallen down a bit in the last couple of weeks but um, we'll bring that I'm not quite the gym um, fan that you are though I have I have good I have good intentions but bringing those practices in in the morning and recognizing I know know that if I spend some time by myself before the rest of my household gets moving and before I I go into my to-do list I'm just a better person I'm a nicer person as well as more productive yeah I mean I think I mean you know listening to us talk I mean I think sometimes um you know it's like another thing to do um, you know, there's visualizing and affirmation and we're going to go to the gym blah, 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 blah. and sometimes I exhaust myself I mean, because I'm such a fan of self-development and, you know, and my team sometimes say, Susie, for God's sake, it's a magazine. You know, people don't want to be doing all the self-development in the magazine. You know, it's for entertainment. And I think so I've managed to create the Life Leap Club so I can do all my self-development there and keep the magazine to be more relaxing. But I think I've just been interviewing a great guy called John Parkin who wrote uh, uh, it is the name of his name, so I'm going to swear now, but it's called the Fuck It series. Mm-hmm. But he talks about very much about, you know, getting into the flow and, and doing doing nothing. You know, I think it's this, this balance of doing and being. And, you know, I've always been a doer. So I, it feels like my next chapter is very much about learning how to be mm. and you know, which makes me panic because I think, oh my God, I have so much to do. Blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's <laughs> by, by doing less and seeing, you know, it's then I always, for me, it's, it was always then that I had a really strong, big idea. Mm. Um, and it's, it's just creating, for me, creating more space um, and less, you know, smoke, creating more space in your life. But so the meditation and the affirmations and the visualization, that's exactly what they do. Um, but I, I laugh to myself because I think, okay, that's, we're, you know, we're, we're scheduling that because we've got too much to do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think... 
But I think it also, um, you're right, because I, again, and I know a lot of women in my community are high achievers, like we have high expectations of ourselves. But there's all, there's a few different aspects to this. I know that that's one of my Achilles heels is that I can be tremendously hard on myself. And so that is part of the learning curve. That is part of the next chapter is softening and softening expectations. But there's no apologies from the fact that I, I love personal development. But yeah, it's, it's important not to get the halt as a result of that I really enjoy the the cup of tea in the morning with the meditation that when it becomes a chore then I think again this is the self-awareness piece it's recognizing like today I I needed some time out I there was lots of things that I needed to do but I was tired so I chose to let them go I'll pick them up again tomorrow so it is that ebb and flow but understanding what are the practices that anchor you and and also energize you and it's finding that the combination you're absolutely right we don't want someone listening to go oh my god I've got to do that and that and that and that no 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 you have to listen to the different options and choose the ones that feel good for you that fit you try them on for size if it doesn't feel good let it go that's the beauty I think about getting older and wiser is making decisions that support us better both both in our businesses and our lives. I think part you're absolutely right. And I think it's the piece around listening to our emotions yes. and having a conversation with that. So our emotions are only trying to tell us something, you know, and it's like if you've got anger coming up or um, frustration or um, grumpiness, it's trying to tell us something. And so it's being, so for me, journaling is a way to say, well, what, I'm moaning. You know what I mean? Like when you moan, it's like, okay, well, what, what's that matter? That, oh, okay. I need more space. Okay, great. Right. And I think when you're, I think when you're making the shift from one way of being to the other, creating these spaces like journaling, meditation, affirmations, it just gives you the space to start recognizing what your emotions are trying to tell you. Mm. Um, and, and, and I think, I mean, even, you know, it's that constant, um, as you say, ebb and flow of listening to those things. Um, and, and that also, I think, creating habits, you know, that you don't have to think about them because it, once, once it's automatic, it's great. Then you don't think of it. It's just what you do and it's there. So it's great. And that comes back around to what you were saying before about when you realized when you had that breakthrough point with the life coach that you could actually take control of and create your destiny. We can do the same. We can decide the habits that we want to cultivate. It takes attention, and but then they become a part of who we are. So I, I was a smoker for years, and I and my, yeah. that was just so tied up in my identity. I could not imagine not being a smoker but you know I yeah. picked up my my little app on my iPhone the other day that told me there's been five and a half years since I picked up a cigarette now that blew my mind like that I could actually break yeah. that habit it's been almost 12 years since I picked up a drink and both yeah. of those both of those habits were so ingrained in me but you know living proof it's possible to change <laughs> that is for and, sure and, it, and, and that is so inspiring isn't it I mean the thing is um I think it's not I, what I never ever sell is the idea that it's easy so to change I, no. I I don't know whether it's me but I find it really hard to change habits you know it's just uh, just from a very simple thing of you know when you get a new mobile phone and it's a kind of new thing and and I can't and I can I really it, it takes me ages and ages and ages to learn how to use the new system and it's got an upgrade and it really irritates me and I'm, but for me that was always like oh actually you find it quite hard some people adapt very quickly. My, I see my son who's 15 and he, he's got it quick. But, uh, you know, that whole idea of your neural pathways. and blah, blah, blah. So when you're making huge changes like giving up cigarettes and giving up alcohol or taking up exercise or journaling, it, it takes you, it will take much longer than you think to really embed it. And then for me, that's an important piece to, to recognize because then I can be very compassionate, you know, that it will take me a year to to really the exercise is part of my life um that meditation is part of my life or it, it takes a while to to really embed that so for some of people it may be you know they say 21 days it's never taken me 21 days it's always taken much longer to embed that and then once but once you've got it once it's part of your life then it becomes easy for me so it's always worth the energy and the the commitment and the intention to mm. do that 
Absolutely. So, I mean, all of these things that we're talking about, they begin with awareness. They begin with, like, first you can have awareness of wanting to make a change and then you move through to the step of actually deciding that you're going to take action and then look at ways to do it. So let's let's bring that around, that process around to this concept of I'm now more aware of what my purpose is. I want to realign my business. I want to go in a new direction. I want to go to the next level. All of those different options. But the doubt that sits there, I mean, we that's the part that we've got to move through that you know as you're saying taking yourself out of your comfort zone just a little bit every day till you sort of create I guess the habit of taking risk like taking action regardless of the fear or regardless of what your brain is telling you is or isn't possible let's talk about some of the um, practices that perhaps a woman who is ready she wants to change but there is still that doubt is sort of stronger than her self-belief how do we tip the balance what are some ideas that that you have that you've experienced and and taught and seen that can help you start to build up that belief muscle and start stepping more into purpose I think the the thing is with doubt is to make friends with it it's all I mean in my experiences is that it never goes away um the thing is is for it not to stop you so for me I kind of go okay here's doubt again so I so normally I don't even recognize it as doubt what I what will be happening is it's be aware that it's procrastination so I'll be procrastinating and I'll think okay hang on what's going on here and then it's oh it's because I oh I doubt whether this is going to work so noticing it recognizing it and then being like okay you're doubting right what do I need to recognize or identify that will help you clear the next step you might be doubt you might be right absolutely this might not work but we're gonna what we're gonna do is my my commitment always is get to the end and let's get it finished let's let's find out and then we know that whatever happens whether this doesn't work or not we'll find out and that's a great way of finding out so it's a commit to doing it despite the whether it fails or not so don't make success of the project or whatever it is um because to be um the most important thing make for me and for what i see with my community it's about what are you learning what are you learning along the way so if doubt comes up is saying yes you might be right but we're going to try it and see what we learn because those those lessons are the things often that will will help you get you know the reasons why they it might not work but then you okay that's not working oh okay we need to go in that direction did it mean so it's good to have doubt because it, it will help you figure out, oh, no, we need to turn left a little bit here and then go around that, is, that way. That is so key. I often um, use the expression that you can't drive, you can't steer a parked car. So if we, if we never start, if we never get that feedback, if we never get those lessons, then we can't course correct. It's it's impossible. So I love I love that that reframe. So it's almost like procrastination is doubt being manifest. And there's other versions as well. I guess perfectionism. That's probably another one that can come up. Oh, it's not it's not quite right yet. Can't let it out into the world. Have you seen that one show up as another film of doubt? Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, so it's so you know using the car metaphor. It's the idea, you know, when you're in the car and you've got the sat nav and the sat nav can't pick up the signal and you don't know which way to go. The only yeah. way to find out which way to go is to keep driving and then you you pick up the signal and you realize you've gone the wrong way. And I think procrastination, perfectionism, all of those things, it's like, okay, perfectionism is coming up. I'm um you know, it's not right. It's not right. Okay. It's not right. But just keep, just keep going, keep going, keep going. Just, just put it out there. Put that program out there. Keep going. Ah, signal. Right. Okay. I need a new website designer. I need a, um, a proofreader. I need a, whatever it is at that point. And then you can course correct and, and you're off again. But the thing is, you know, if it's, if it's, if it's imperfect and out there, it's better than perfect and just dead in the water. Yeah, sitting, just, sitting in the bottom drawer, sitting in the bottom yeah. of your heart, sitting in the bottom of your head, but never yeah. letting it free. Huh. It's getting moving, isn't it? It's getting, mm. it's getting moving. And, and then life will, life will um, give you feedback. Um, I mean, I, I often I talk about pushing doors you know, so it's like sometimes I don't, I really don't know. I have no idea what the next thing is. So I, I'll push, I'll push on doors. I'll, I'll put 
emails out there or ask for help, whatever. And sometimes doors remain really firmly closed. And I'm like, okay, right, fine. And then one door will just open and you'll bang, 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 bang. And it just becomes really, really easy. Um, so it's just constantly kind of seeing, you know, what doors are. And then I always have in the past been confused about, you know, if you keep pushing on a door, it's something you really want to happen. You keep pushing a door, you keep pushing a door and it keeps remaining cl- closed. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's something that you really, really want, I keep knocking. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then what happens is it's because what, I, what I've learned is it's because I, I needed another piece of information or I needed the key for the door before it will open. And I, I hadn't got there yet. I haven't found the right key. So I had to do a little bit more of learning and I didn't, because you don't know what you don't know. Mm, absolutely. That's actually what you're saying there is such a good point. It's finding that balance piece. That's often come up in conversation is how do you know whether you should keep knocking or whether you should just go, God damn it, I'm looking for another door. So it's finding that point. And I think you just nailed it there with when you were referring to if it's something that you were so passionate about, that you were so drawn towards. Like when you were talking about that desire to always be a writer, it's always been there. And this is actually where I think if we look to the subject of purpose, it's not so much about discovering it. It's about uncovering it or reconnecting to it because I really believe that it evolves over time and it gets manifest in different ways. I mean, you were writing you know, for a newspaper back then and then you went into a different magazine and all over the place until you hit what feels like the perfect combination. But the purpose is still there. It's just in a slightly different form now. Would you would you feel that that is um, a reasonable discussion, a reasonable description of purpose that it changes perhaps the clothes that it's wearing, but it's still the same underneath throughout your lifetime? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and for me, it's it's around I think creativity. But so what I what I've realised is writing is just an expression of my creativity. I've become very ah. skilled. I've become very skilled at writing over over the years, but now also. I'm enjoying um, looking at, we're trying to create Psychology's TV and Psychology's radio. And, and I'm really enjoying the process of learning how to, you know, create programs or create podcasts or create radio that is really compelling and interesting and the same as we do in the magazine. So for me, it is about, uh, so I think that's my primary skill, but that's not, writing is my primary skill, but it's not my purpose. My purpose, I think, is around with the value that that expresses so i i believe purpose is living a values a values um driven life and creativity is one of my highest values so um for me that's ex, you know it, it's, it's so important to discover what your values are what lights you up inside and to create your life around that I could not agree more. And I love that distinction is that because if I think about my purpose, being my purpose, if you really come down to it underneath it all, it is to help people believe more in themselves. Because if once you've got that, then you can take action like that. That's that's my purpose. Now, it comes out in all different ways. And at this at this um, manifestation of it in my life at the moment, the way in which I am serving the world is through business mentoring of women in masterminds and retreats like that's and bringing women together in that community with that connection. Now, it, in that same purpose about believing in yourself, it comes out when I'm speaking at a recovery um, meeting yeah, because yeah. You're, you're helping yeah. people believe that it is possible to change. It came out at, you know, at high school when I used to be the agony aunt. I mean, it comes out in all different ways. So yeah. that, how you're saying your writing is an expression, a way in which your purpose is communicated or comes to life or finds its way into the world. And I love that, that recognition that the writing is one version of it, but the TV, the radio, the many other ways in which you express Novel it. Novel writing, yeah. yeah. Novel writing, I mean, yes. There's, yeah, so, there's yeah. so many ways in which you can express it, but understanding that ultimately the thing that really connects with your heart is expressing yourself creatively for the, for, you know, for the, for the purpose of helping others as well is a yeah. wonderful thing to recognize. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, just to go back to the, the you know, the other thing about the journalism, um, mm-hmm. you know, where I wanted to be a journalist, I wanted to be a journalist, and I applied to college. Um, I, I, I went and did the exam, and they said, oh, can all of these this small group of people, can you go into the next room? And I was thinking, oh, dear, not many people have got through, have they? And they said to my group, I'm sorry, your standard of English isn't high enough to get on the course. And, and I said, what do you mean? They said, you can't spell. So you know, at that point I could have let my 
my dreams. So talking about purpose and creativity, and but also pushing on doors. I was re- I, I'd, I'd practically given up my job at that point, and they told me I hadn't got on the course. So, and now you know I'm the editor in chief of Psychology's magazine. So, never ever let anyone tell you that you're not good enough or that you can't do something. I, I am still a terrible speller, <laughs> but there is spell check, you know, <laughs> it is. Um, and then I went back and I applied and, and there may be reasons why that doesn't work for you at the time. Um, you know, the door remains shut. Um, it, it, it turns out in the next, the next uh, intake that I, I, I met three of my best friends, you know, going forward so you know I thought oh the universe just wanted me to meet these people you know <laughs> so, you know I, so there's a thing around purpose and also that piece about keeping going so yes. why wh- when do you let go when do you just give up you know sometimes you just think you know what this is not going to work for me and then it and you know because your heart still goes but it, it's there for me it is and so just listen to your heart calling you know my dream would not die if your dream won't die, go and find out a new way of expressing it. Find a, find a way. It's just not, perhaps not just that way or not that time, but you don't have to give up. I completely agree. And yeah, this is a beautiful, um, as we're bringing the conversation full circle, it comes back, I believe, to that concept of connection and community. Because if you are all alone, knocking on those doors, pushing on those doors, and those doors are not budging, because you're missing a piece. If you're in isolation, that can be soul destroying, you might let go of the dream. If you don't have the example and the encouragement and the compassion of others as well, we need to develop it for ourselves without a doubt. But I am a huge believer that isolation is a dream killer and being in community with others who are also on their own parts can be very inspiring for us which is why I think community as you created it as I create it within um, my masterminds and retreats and things like that it's just an important piece of the puzzle it's not the whole puzzle but my goodness it's such an important piece isn't it yeah I I mean I think um, having a network having um, people friends community um, it's I mean, I can't even begin to express how important it is um, and to connect with the people who are kind, who will reach out. Because there's times when it, I mean, that's why in a way that's for me, part of the, the reason for psychologies is I always want it to be that, that place or that brand or that magazine or that. So when you're in a dark place, you can pick the magazine up and go, it is possible to do something new so I want just by the magazine it's this kind of invisible friend this invisible mentor this invisible coach that's there in your life that can say it is possible you can do this I mean now we've created this great community as well but without that yeah I don't know whether I would have I would have created half the half the things that I've done without some I've always created communities of good kind supportive people yeah. Amen to that. And you will continue to be creative as you're moving into that radio, into that TV, all the other incarnations of Psychology's magazine that, that's going forward. Susie, this is this has been fantastic. I think, you know, kindred spirits without without a doubt. And hopefully in this conversation we've been happening where we could have continued for hours, I'm absolutely sure. There's some really great nuggets for our listeners to to hear and, and to understand fully that that doubt that keeps creeping around the corner it's okay as you yeah. said make friends with it get get mindful understand what's going on be kind to yourself and just keep pushing on those doors so apart from obviously i want to put the links into the show notes of where we can find the magazine i know you've got a tremendous facebook page i think 1.5 million likes on there and then yes you can, you can come through once you're a subscriber you can come through into the the life leapers club but where where else um in terms of where people can connect with with you do you have a facebook page how how would we send people in your direction yes i mean i have a a, a personal facebook page susie walker but i think where you'll get the real value is is the psychology's facebook page and to join the life leap club which is you know we have an amazing community there of people so it's about subscribing to the magazine which you can do um and, and for me it's about being part of that tribe and that community oh. will uh, you know it will transform your life. I really believe that. 
<laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that as well. I'll make sure that I put the links through on the page so everyone can go along there and find it. And, you know, each time that magazine hits my iPad, because I, being over here, I are a digital subscriber, but it's, uh, it's the first thing I read each month. I really enjoy it. So, Susie, thank you so much again. Really appreciate your energy, your insights, your, your openness for sharing what that journey was like for you and, and some of those, those tips and those practices and techniques that you use to help you blossom and flourish. And let's hope that all our ladies listening today take those on board and, and step into their own next chapters aligned with purpose as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. And it's really, I'd love to acknowledge you as well for all that you're doing and what you're creating. Um, and the more that we can get together and collaborate and, and, you know, do interviews like this, you know, we can just beam it out to more people. So thank you for inviting me to speak today. You're very welcome. And for you, my lovely listener, everything that we've said here, absolutely true. That doubt, that thing that you think needs to hold you back, it's just a thought. It doesn't make it a reality. We all have it. And there is ways in which, as you've heard today and on all the other interviews that have been a part of this series, stepping into your purpose so that it's aligned with you, so that you you feel that you're here making a contribution and feeling fulfilled, it's absolutely possible. Don't do it alone. Come into community connect with other women on the same path and let's see what can unfold in your next chapter remember there's a great resource associated with this series if you simply go to angelaraspis.com forward slash purpose you can download the workbook that i've developed to help you realign with your values and realign your business so that it really is on purpose and feels fabulous to you so thank you once again for tuning into the your next chapter podcast and i'll be back with you very soon take care Thanks for listening to the Your Next Chapter podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please let me know. Pop over to AngelaRaspis.com to subscribe to the show and leave a review. And whilst you're there, you can also enjoy valuable free resources, including show notes and downloads, along with the Next Chapter community, where you can connect with other wholehearted women on the same journey as you. We'd love to welcome and support you as your next chapter unfolds. See you next time.